Good evening to both debating teams and fellow audience. The motion for today's debate is should college or tertiary education in Malaysia be free? On the government team, we have Jane and Ivan as the first speakers, Sophia and as the second speaker, Tai as the third speaker, Steph as the fourth speaker. On the opposition team, we have Eden as the first speaker, Haiyan as the second speaker, Hilary as the third speaker, and Harshini as the final speaker. Before we proceed with the debate, allow me to lay down some ground rules. Each speaker is given three minutes to present your points, except for the first speakers, you have five minutes. At the end of the debate, there will be a five minute question exchange session between both teams. And thirdly, should there be any POIs or questions, please use the raise hand feature and the speaker will get the option to accept or decline. If both teams are ready, we shall begin the debate with the first speaker from the government team. Good evening to the chairperson, adjudicators, fellow audience and members of the opposite team. As stated by the chairperson, the motion for today is should college or tertiary education in Malaysia be free? As the government team, we support the motion that it should be indeed free. By definition, tertiary education often refers to post-secondary education, which applies to college or universities and education institution or establishment in particular to provide higher education or specialize in professional or vocational training. According to FMT, Malaysia was the latest country to declare university free for domestic students in the run-up general election. However, it was instead decided onto scholarships for low-income students as a way to combat, combat the unaffordability of tertiary education. Mm. And based on the survey from the London expert market, Malaysia is ranked the fifth most expensive country for higher education, simultaneously being ranked as the country with the cheapest tuition fee out of the top 10 most expensive places for tertiary education. Then looking into the income to cost of education ratio, it was reported that parents here spend more than half their salary on education, despite taking loans from the government. Thus, Bringing back to our motion about why it should be free, one of the reasons would be to ease the burdens of parents funding for their child's education. Um, that's all from my side. Now I'll pass it to the next speaker. Thank you, Jane. Um, thank you for the points that Jane has raised. Uh, from my side, um, I would like to raise the point regarding on the society as i as as jane mentioned before with with uh, free education people are able to 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 get a highly um a high education without paying uh, within within their their affordability and i would like to impose that um with high edu with with the free higher education the society will be able to improve and at a faster rate all right with a better understanding of the society the people are capable to participate in the politics and also improve our country. For instance, as you can see that um, in our current country situation, um, there are a lot of unwise decisions being made in the, in, the, in the government sector. And I believe with the free higher education, this problem can be lower and our country will, 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 will improve in a, in a much, much faster and wiser pace. All right. And also the, the free higher education uh, perks that 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 um, the the college can offer is also to to have people to learn a highly skilled jobs or I mean a highly skilled um, so that they can uh, get a better jobs and this will actually increase more job opportunity and more people will actually join the workforce and according to study Malaysian has uh, Malaysian's unemployment rate is currently at three point three. 2% um, as of 2019. That's about a million people in Malaysia. And I really believe that with free tertiary education, the employment rate in Malaysia can be lower, right? And and in, and with, with free education, it can also provide our countries, it can also lower our country's poverty rate, all right? Um, another study shows that Malaysia is currently is now at 5.6% poverty rate as of 2017. And if we were to compare for to, to Norway, the country Norway poverty rate is currently at 0.5%. And 
And the reason why they can achieve such rate is because they offer a free tertiary education. And I would like to pass the time to Sophia to continue her point. Sorry, that was a mistake. Uh, next speaker is Eden. Oh, sorry. I'll pass the time to Eden. Um, hello. Um, good, good morning to the chairperson, our guests and students. The topic for our debate is that college should be free for everyone. We disagree with the definition given by the opposition and we believe that their statement is false. Oh, hey, don't like that. Lah. Um, okay, fine. Good afternoon. Um, I will now be talking to you on why college should not be free for everyone. The first reason is that if college is free for everyone, younger generations wouldn't know how to handle their finances. What, what I mean by this is college is a place full of learning ex experiences, once, one of which is learning how to create a budget to save money. College loans are often one of the first major financial dealing with pe that people have to work with. Paying them off in a timely manner shows that you know how to budget your money and this is a skill that's very useful in the long run. The second reason on why college shouldn't be free is because if, if, if college were to be free, it might not seem to be as important an anymore. If higher education becomes free, it might appear to devalue a college degree. It might also lead to students cutting more classes, not trying, not trying because they don't have to get their money's worth when they aren't paying for anything. They have nothing to lose if the college is free. And, and, uh, and my third reason is because, um, sorry, uh, my third reason is because um, college student persistence and success will decrease. Free college has a tendency to undermine the potential of um, undermine the potential of college persistence. Wait, uh, one more reason. So one more reason. Um, um, that's that's all I have to say for my for my reasons. I'll pass it to the next speaker. Okay. Um. Thank you, Eden. Um. I would like to first rebut a few of the points you had. First of all, um, if you compare skill and financial burden. The skill that someone possesses should not be costing the financial burden that a student has to bear. And discipline is also not a skill that you have to pay to learn. It's something that you already have to naturally possess. So I don't think it's fair to judge both on the same level. But Without, sorry. So yeah. I, you can continue. Okay. Um, you know, I think if you, can I just uh, go on first? You can, you can continue. Yeah. I can go on, okay. So uh, I would just like to go on to my argument. So my argument involves the big issue of student debt, or I should be more accurately called the crippling student debt. Now, student debt is prevalent in our country today. Many graduates actually start their careers and their adult lives owing tens to hundreds of thousands in ringgit just for college costs, while others, they don't even attempt to enroll in uh, universities because the average cost to study at a public university in Malaysia is approximately four, sorry, four thousand ringgit a year, and in private universities, it's estimated to be twenty-five thousand ringgit a year. So, in order to be able to afford an education, students actually have to resort to applying for a loan, namely the Piti Pitian loan. And Piti Pitian loans, they don't only affect the students; they also affect the country's economy very greatly. Let me just explain more, okay? PTPTN or the it's called the Malaysian National Higher Education Fund Corporation is the biggest provider of student loans in the country. But where do they get the money? PTPTN actually borrows from the financial market at four to five percent, and the percentage that is loaned to students for PTPTN loans is at one percent. So 
currently the PTPTN has accumulated a very, very, very big debt amounting to 40 billion ringgit in principle, as well as 13 billion ringgit in interest. So that amounts to about 53 billion ringgit in student debt alone. And that debt alone is possibly able to cripple the economy. And to add on, 28% of bachelor degree holders, they, they were unemployed in 2015. And then others, they had jobs that barely paid enough to survive. So these people have to resort to not paying back their PT PTN loans because they just cannot afford to. And such a, and other debts such as credit cards and yeah, personal loans, they are unable to pay. So it leads them to bankruptcy. So on the student parts, yes, they have to suffer bankruptcy and to the economy, it pushes the economy towards the brink of collapse. So the point I'm trying to make is that free higher education will not only help the economy, reducing the need for PTPTN loans and helping to lift the burden of extensive amounts of student debt. On the other hand, it will also open doors to opportunities for those who aren't exactly financially able to carry the crippling debt that comes with simply getting an education because not many people can afford to take that risk as not people are awarded with that privilege. Yeah, so that's my point. Thank you. All right, the next speaker should be the opposition second speaker. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to bring out my point is like uh, the higher education fees, uh, if it's they need to be covered by government, like the means like we get the fund from the taxpayers. If the higher education is free, the tax taxpayers actually would have to pay for it. It's like not really free. It's like paid by all of us or all of us in uh, in the future after we work. And this financial burden will be dispersed through the increased income taxation. The government will have to raise the taxes to pay for the institution's rent facilities and the professor's salaries. And all those people who couldn't afford, uh, afford higher education would still wouldn't be able to afford it because the drastic raise in taxes and the increasing high living costs. And more students will have to work to support the living costs and their families. Also, taxpayers are paying for the college education whether or not they are benefiting. Uh, for example, the country Germany is one of the countries that highest income tax burdens in the world because of this, uh, they are free. They have free higher education. It's ranging from fourteen percent to forty five percent of your income. That means like you have to pay a very large portion of your salary, so you won't have enough to support your life also because you have to uh, pay for like all the students, especially those students they are studying the uh, subjects such as the medicine, law, which uh, engineering, sorry, which requires a lot of time and it have a long duration and all those expenses are actually all supported by all those taxpayers. And furthermore, the certification will be devalued. If like the enrollment totals are increased, a college uh, certificate could be devalued and meaningless if everyone and everyone has the opportunity to go to college. Like at this time, there are already a lot of people who have those qualifications that do not have jobs or are currently underemployed. So as more people go to go to higher education, the value will decrease and flooding the workplace with auto graduates wouldn't help anyone because there's no guarantee that putting more people through this higher education will have them end up with better jobs. Doesn't really make eligible uh, make them eligible for high wage jobs. And also those supply of high paying jobs are limited and only best people will get promoted and the rest will stay at the bottom doing unskilled labels. Okay, that's all for my point. Thank you. I'll pass to next speaker. Government, Kai is the third speaker, you may speak. Kai, your, your mic is muted.
sorry. My S. Yeah, and we can hear you now. OK, cool. So um, regarding the, your, the, the point about taxpayers needing to increase their tax. So the, the, the issue right now stems from students who cannot afford their tier, uh, tier tier, tier tiery education because they are not working yet and they need some people need this kind of uh, education in order for them to uh, do their job so that they can earn money from it. So not to, to spread the um, expect the expenses to pay education, it should be spread towards the higher income, uh, high class people or or across the working class at very least. So there is another uh, similar program by Australia called Help Higher Education Loan Program. The way they do things is that students can have this uh, loan where they don't need to pay a single cent until they graduate. So them as a student, they are not paying a single cent, but once they start to uh, work, they are now a capable um, individuals in, in, in affording these expenses. So they are then pay, paying uh, all this education. So coming to, uh, I would like to also give up a point regarding the Malaysia's uh, situation. So according to the United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization, short form UNESCO, the current tertiary school enrollment is only at below 50%. To be exact, 2018, it's only at 45.13%. There are about half of the Malaysia youth are not being sent to the tertiary uh, education. So there are, of course, a lot, many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons being that they cannot afford college, they cannot afford university because the cost is too high for them. So one word, accessibility, is the reason why uh, university should be free because we have different classes in, in, in this society. So the low income class will be able to go into the, uh, will get the fair chance of going into this higher education than the higher, higher income uh, classes. So when they have the fair amount of chance to go into the education, all of them have access to education, then the ones that are capable of make, uh, helping the nation to grow their income may be in the low income classes. And once they get the education, those people will be able to Hi. raise their, uh, will be able to raise their potential. Mm. Okay. The fourth speaker is for the opposition team. Uh, okay, hi. Uh, good afternoon to everyone that is present here today. As the topic of this debate is college should be free for everyone, we, the opposition team, believe that this statement is false. Because firstly, I would like to mention my point on why college should not be free for everyone. For one, uh, students won't know how to decide where they want to study. So according to Wins Norton 2018, right now, college students are able to choose the college of their choice uh, and then pay for their tuition fees with either scholarships, loans, or savings. This allows private colleges and public colleges to compete for the same type of students. So it, uh, ups to, it's, it's up to the student to make their own decisions based not only just on finances, but also fit. Besides that, some students also prefer learning in smaller groups. Some may find it overwhelming studying in a class of around like 100 people. It may not be their preferred way of learning. Like, can you guys imagine having a lecture class with 100 students in one room? It's definitely hard to keep focus, right? Yeah. Um, 
So there are students who are attracted to smaller private institutions where the crowds are smaller and the lecturer interactions are more personal. Yeah, so I would like to go back to Sophia's point where she said that free college would reduce the loads of PTP, PTPDN. Um, according to Ellen Anderson 2020, having free college will mean more people will attend college. As the enrollment for college increases, so do the fees. This means that the taxes for education related purposes might go up of the funding from the government for something else such as the military, uh, where it will be diverted just to pay the influx of fees. Besides that, uh, Ivan's point just now where he said that free college would improve the country by increasing job opportunities and making the employment rate lower. Uh, sorry. The outcome of uh, having free college would be the oversaturation of some areas of the workforce. This leaves even more people with degrees, uh, working jobs, they will be overqualified for it. So to sum up, uh, having college free is, for everyone is not a good idea because it will cause students to be unable to make up their minds on where they want to pursue their higher education as well as having oversaturation of graduates in certain areas of workforce. Thank you. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't see that. Fung Wei Kwan, raise up the hand. Uh, how do yeah, I it's me, I put it. Yeah, I would like to rebut on uh, earlier Eden's point where he said that um, uh, free education, free tertiary education will actually devalue the certificate. And I, I would like to go against it because um, the certificate of, of, or rather the value of, of the college itself shouldn't be defined by how much you're going to pay for the college or rather how much you're going to pay for the cost, but rather it should depends on your individual's intellectual um, ability. So making college free wouldn't actually um, devalue the, certif the certificate because um, throughout the whole course, you will be put the individual will be put to test to whether you are qualified to graduate from, from, from the courts itself. So I think um, making tertiary college free is just the first step to, to, to help them to see or to find out whether they are able to, to cope with the course itself or not. Yeah, and also um, like um, another point that Hillary brought, brought up, which is um, oversaturation. Uh, employment over oversaturation, and I think it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't really happen because um, throughout the whole college or rather throughout the whole course that you're gonna take, right? It doesn't only like teach you um, the specialties that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna learn or rather you're gonna work in, but rather the college itself actually teaches you how to solve problems, right? And even though they are not able to to achieve. Um, their own specialties, they are at least know how to, uh, they at least improve, they will be able to improve their own problem solving and that will lead to a better society and especially um, if you come out the college without getting the, 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 the actual certificate, you are still coming out with a set of skills to be able to solve problem wisely and also yeah, effectively and that will actually help the workforce a lot more better. Yeah, that's my point. All right, then we will go to the fourth speaker in the government team. Uh, all right. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. So uh, first of all, I like to rebut Hillary's point about college not being free would actually decrease the choices students make. So this point is actually very controversial because you see if college were free, students who want to pursue an expensive degree, say like a medical degree, they would actually have the chance to choose the degree. And um, another point that Hillary says is also the taxes, the taxes would increase and there'll be more burden on the people. Well, according to a compelling fact from free colleges in Europe, these, nas these nations, they don't generally spend that much on higher education. 
For instance, the EENEE -E -E report uh, said that as a share of national D GDP, the US, although they spent 1.36% on post-secondary education, Finland and Norway only spent 2% and 1.96%. Also, I would like to say that um, the point where Hillary said uh, some students may prefer small group learning and they would be able to choose their university. This point is, I would like to rebut this point because these are preferences that we are talking about. What we are talking, the, the bigger good here is whether or not they are able to even receive education. So for my say, if education were, was free and I had the opportunity to have education these preferences will come secondary and also we all know that education to summarize sorry to summarize we all know that education has paved the way for the unfortunate because many of them were not born with a silver spoon you see all the success stories broadcasted in the media um they all have aspiring messages in attempt to give hope to those who are struggling but honestly these stories are few and far between and the chances are only awarded to the best of the best when scholarships are offered. So where are the stories of the one that fell short? Why should education, the first stepping stone in life, be a necessity that you have to fight? And why should one's life be predetermined just because they couldn't afford tertiary education? Imagine a world with millions of able, hardworking young men contributing and moving our nation to a better place because they were given an opportunity to study and serve the country. To every parent that's, you know, pitching their savings to afford tuition, every guardian that's struggling to put food on the table, it is only humane for us to hope that with a single piece of paper, the cert that they are getting, their child would never have to do the same again. Uh, that's my point for now. Thank you. The opposition team, four speaker, you may speak. Hi, okay. Uh, so what I would like to say is that when education is, is free, many people will enroll in college and there are high possibilities that many students don't get into the college as the seats are filled quickly. For example, like the government universities these days, where there are very limited intakes and students get to give uh, get to give three options while applying and mostly many students don't like their second and third options, but somehow they have no choice left. That would be the situation if college is free. And I would like to go back to Ivan's point where he said that there will be more job opportunities i would like to uh kind uh fit that when many enroll in the college the number of graduates will increase where it will lead to many unemployed graduates and it, it would also lead to occupation short shortage also uh free education affects the source of economy in the country as the government gets a tax payment from colleges it also affects the socio-economic status if education is made free. Many would opt for the high status profession related studies like doctor, lawyer, engineer and etc. And they won't go for the simple ones like business or baking or media studies due to family pressure, even if the child has no interest in those fields. Yeah. Saying that enrolling students into the college, the student has to reach the required qualification to get into the course. So this would make some parents to force their children to get into the course they don't like only because the education is given free and it would also lead to a future frustrated or depressed society. And from our debate, I would like to conclude that with this, uh, college should not be completely free it should be on a cheaper sliding scale than it is right now, with more availability for poor students to get better loans. Thank you. 
All right. Okay, so if there's anything else that either of the teams would like to add. Uh, hi, I would like to add one more point, if that's okay. Okay, okay I would like to rebut one of the points that Hashini said. She said, if college were free, people would opt for high status professional jobs. Should we limit the potential of our nation just because of that? So say um, medical, say for now, we, we have to pay and then the doctors are less than if college were free. But look at our medical field right now. Is it as good as Germany who offers free education? No, we are not at the top of the medical field. So say if we have more people wanting to become doctors and they are not limited by the by any financial burdens, Malaysia could actually make it somewhere or actually keep up towards um, leading countries like Germany or Norway. So yeah, that's my point. Haha, <laughs> thank you. Anything else that? Hmm? Har Harshni, you have something to say? Yeah. Okay, so uh, what I would like to reply to uh, Steph. Okay, uh, thing is, um, for doctors, right now, it's not that we don't have many graduates with this, uh, with this, uh, with, without it being um, free, there are many doctors who are who are unemployed. So it would be better if they get in all these doctors to be employed and you, you, yeah to get employed. If 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 it is uh, if it is free already, then there will be more unemployed doctors than it is right now. Thank you. All right. Kai? Kai, you have anything to say? Yes, I would like to also rebut that point where uh, Hashini says that the unemployed doctors, so following the example. So for, for this matter, uh, we have to look at the situation like this. When there are more graduates, they are able to fill up all the occupation seats. So we can have, um, if, if not 100%, we can fill up most of the occupation seats. So there won't be any sort of shortage of people who, uh, shortage of companies who are lacking of the employees. So, and second, once those, are, those seats are being filled, the extra people who are already being educated, but they are not, uh, they don't have the opportunity for additional job, those people can be the entrepreneurs. So for example, if we go back to the uh, example of doctors, so doctors can open up clinics, so they have more clinics. More clinics means patients can be treated in uh, faster because of course uh, patients doesn't have to queue up for to, to wait for that particular doctors. So in that case, then it will be beneficial for the entire nation instead of being uh, short on, on, on job itself. Because at the end of the day, education still needs to improve on uh, a person's critical thinking, developing their skills so that their skills can be used to develop the nation. We are always talking about the nation development here. So if we make college free, everybody has access to uh, the tools to live up to their potential, then th we can create a lot of um, talents in different kind of sectors in order to develop the nation and the nation uh, income growth comes from the people and then subsidize back to the education and the loops keep on going like that. So at the end of the day, it, it is beneficial for everyone in every uh, industry. Thank you. Ivan? Yeah, I would like to add um, a few points to Kai's point regarding on the rebate to Ashini's point. Um, yeah, Ashini said that 
if education were to be free and there will be more and more graduates aiming, there will be highly high chances of more graduates aiming at the same specialties and there will cost of unemployment, correct? So the point that I would like to bring up is even though they don't have a place in their specialties, they still have a lot of chances or in fact high chances of, of getting job that is out of their specialties. Because throughout college, you don't only learn in your specialty, but you also learn your you, you also learn communication skill, your social skill, and your language. And this will actually help you to opt for other job opportunities. And according to the study of uh, from CNBC, 40% of college students wouldn't actually work in their field of specialties. And I, I myself have witnessed a few of my friends that they where they study uh, a specialty, let's say psychology, but now they are ended up working in a bank. So I would say that not everybody graduates from a college will definitely 100% work in their own specialties. And even though they don't have a, 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 a seat or rather a, a, a chance to work in their specialties, they have a lot more chances to work in other specialties such as businessmen like what Kai said. And also uh, there are so many positions in, in, in the society to, to apply for. So thank you. That's my point. Thank you, Ivan. So I will invite the adjudicators to announce the winning team of this debate. Hello. Judges. Okay, okay. Is there anything else all of you want to say? Okay, so uh, the other judges and I have come to the conclusion uh, and we have all uh, agreed that Kai's team had the best points and elaboration, but the other team did have some very solid points too. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, we agreed that Kai's team uh, had the overall best points. So, yep, Kai's team. Did everybody hear me? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. 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 Yeah.